Thank you so much for, uh, for this wonderful conference. I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's great to see this, this new institute. So, so this work is, um, is done with uh, my uh, PhD student, uh, Sung Cheng Lu, and parameter professor, Tim Shea. And I should say that the bulk of the heavy work was done by, by Sung Cheng. And it's, um, it's, uh, so so let's, let's start. So, uh, so this is the motivation for this talk. Does quantum mechanics matter at non-zero temperature? That may sound like a rhetorical question, but hopefully it will become clear over the talk. What do I mean by that? Um, so um, take this example. So you have Ising model on a, on a, a transfer suite Ising model on a square lattice. This is a phase diagram. The, this is a quantum critical point. Typically, this is called quantum critical point, and this is this is 3D Ising, and the finite temperature transition, all of finite temperature transition is in 2D Ising universality class. And this is often called a classical transition because its universality class is same as that of a completely classical Ising model. When you set H to zero, that's the Onsager critical point, it has the same universality. So it's reasonable to call this classical. Um, OK. Um, but is there, is there, so the question I want to pose is, is there maybe a, a more precise definition of when, when, do, when do you call something classical transition and when do you call something quantum? It's suggestive, but it's, uh, it's not very rigorous. So, uh, so the criteria I will, I, will, I will pose, and you will, hopefully it will become clear why that's a very good criteria, is that uh, I will call a transition classical if the quantum entanglement is short-ranged even at this, uh, even at the phase transition. So if, if there is no long range entanglement, it makes sense to call it classical, because entanglement is what makes uh, quantum mechanics special. So it makes sense that, that criteria it will become clear over the course of the talk. And this is the second example along the same question about whether quantum mechanics matter at, at finite temperature. Um, consider some, some, uh, some system where the ground state has a phase transition from a topological phase, that's a toric code, to some trivial phase, maybe some uh, all, all spin point in the same direction, so short range entangle. And then uh, imagine a case where the uh, anions stay deconfined at, at non zero temperature. Uh, this happens in 3D, 3D toric code. Um, so then, again, it's a valid question. Uh, since anions were what made this ground state special uh, and they stay deconfined, you may ask whether this transition is, should be considered classical or, or quantum. Um, so let's take that case of Tori code, three, three dimension. This is that transition I just mentioned. This is Tori code Hamiltonian. There is a star term and there is a Plackett term. Um, so uh, Tori code has two kinds of excitations, point-like ex excitations. This is three plus one D Tori code and loop-like excitations. Point-like excitations cost order one energy proportional to lambda A when you violate this star term and uh, so think, think of the point-like excitations as ends of strings. And they are loop-like excitations, um, which, are, uh, uh, which are open membranes. So loop-like excitations correspond to open membranes, so they cost energy order L. So these are two kinds of excitations. And the interesting thing is that there is a braiding between uh, loops and, and charges. If you take charge around this loop, it gets a minus one sign. So, uh, so this braiding is very well defined at zero temperature. In, zero temp in, the, in, in the vacuum, there are no, no excitations. So you can create test particles above the vacuum, still very low energy state. And for example, you can create a test electric charge and a test magnetic loop. Obviously, they will come in pair. There will be some other electric charge far away. I'm not, not, not showing it. Um, so you can take it around, and you can, there's a well defined braiding in the ground state. Now you can ask what happens at non-zero temperature. And by temperature, I always mean putting a system in the Gibbs state, e to the power minus beta h. I don't mean putting in some closed, pure state of finite energy density. I'm not doing that. I'm really coupling it to a heat bath. So the system is described by a mixed state, which is a Gibbs state. So at t bigger than zero, it's hard to define braiding, as will become obvious from this picture. So you want to take this loop along this I mean, this is a space-time trajectory of the loop. It, it draws a torus. And this is a test charge I'm interested, interested in. If you're at finite temperature, you have, first of all, finite density of anions. And they move around. So if you do this, you see that while it's doing this, 
it, um, it picks up some other faces because of all the charges which are moving around. So that's not a good thing. It's hard to define gradient at non-zero temperature, and this phenomenon is called quasi-particle poisoning um, for the obvious reason uh, in, the, in the context of topological quantum computing. This is a thing which they are trying to not have in topological quantum computer. Uh, because it always exists at non-zero temperatures, so your lifetime of qubit is limited and all that. It's related to that. So, okay. Um, so it seems that, so now you can estimate what temperature uh, does this thing become severe. So it will become severe when the, there's an there's a order one density of anions in the system. It, that's enough, as, as one can argue. So, um, uh, so L cubed times e to the power minus energy of the point-like particle uh, from there you get the effective temperature at which this becomes severe is 1 over log L. So when L goes to infinity, the, the temperature above which braiding is lost is basically zero. So it doesn't exist at any non-zero temperature, <coughs> the, uh, uh, this, this braiding. So it, it, this indicates that 3D Tori code doesn't have quantum topological order or, or long-range quantum entanglement at any, at any non-zero temperature. And this is consistent with this uh, very nice argument by, by Bani Yoshida that 3D Tori code, I, I can't go into this argument, you can read this paper, it's a different logic based on membrane operators and so on, that 3D Tori code doesn't have a quantum memory at non-zero temperature. You cannot use a 3D Tori code to build a quantum hard drive. Uh, only you can, you can use it to build a classical topological hard drive, but not a quantum topological hard drive. Um, okay, so you might say, okay, now it looks like Tori code in 3D uh, perhaps should not have any interesting quantum entanglement at non-zero temperature. So let's look at something which we are very used to, von Neumann entropy. So in the ground state, von Neumann entropy is a very good measure of entanglement. And as you know, there's a topological entanglement entropy of log two for 3D Tori code. But what happens at non-zero temperature? What happens at non-zero temperature is that there's a, this two-step process for universal part of von Neumann entropy I'm not calling it von entanglement entropy for a good reason, because this is not entanglement. This is take, take the full density matrix, rho, e minus beta h, and then um, trace out some region. To define a reduced, density mat a reduced density matrix for that region, rho a, and look at trace of rho a log rho a, that is s, and look at the constant part of that. So reading part would be some l cube, maybe there's some l, and there's some minus gamma somewhere. And this gamma is what I call S topo. So this is what I'm plotting, this topological part of Neumann entropy, and it remains non-zero up to some order one temperature corresponding to the energy scale of the loops. It's, it's half log two. It drops suddenly because of the, uh, because, because charges uh, move around, but the loops can't become very large because of loop tension, so it remains half log two. So uh, even more, this, uh, this S topo, is non-zero even in a purely classical theory. So if, if, as you can see from here, set lambda a to zero, it survives up till, this half log two survives up till temperature lambda b. So it's a purely classical gauge theory, even then this quantity is non-zero. So clearly this, this has nothing to do with quantum mechanics. It's some classical effect. It knows about their closed loops and so on, but there's nothing quantum about it. It doesn't know about quantum coherence. It's not a good measure of quantum entanglement. This motivates us to ask, what is a good measure of quantum entanglement? So zero to order question is, when do you call a mixed state, such as a Gibbs density matrix, entangled? So let me pose in a, in a negative way, when do you call a density matrix unentangled? Some, something which is, if, if first you have to know what should be boring, and uh, what is unentangled, what, is, uh, what doesn't, doesn't have any entanglement, and whatever density matrix is not unentangled is entangled. So, it's also, is this, this is an entangledness is also called separability, or a state is called separable if it's unentangled. So recall for a pure state, separability is this. If it's a product state over, in, I'm thinking of bipartite Hilbert space. So if it's a product state over two parties, that's called unentangled. Um, so, um, but now if you have a mixed state, this is a very interesting criteria which you can convince yourself this makes sense. If you can write on mixed state row as some of these uh, product-like states with positive coefficients, then it should be considered unentangled because we can prepare this state without any um, quantum operations between A and B. So this is, this is called separability. This was pointed out by Werner in 1989. So 
this is a very unintuitive thing if you have not seen it before. For example, consider a system where with probability p, you prepare a EPR state, and this is a mixed state, and with probability 1 minus p, you prepare an identity state. Clearly, identity is completely unentangled. There is nothing there in, in, in an identity state. Uh, so when p is 0, this is clearly unentangled. When p is 1, we know it's maximally entangled, this state. This is EPR. So what happens in between? You might think for, for any non-zero p, perhaps you have some component of the, of the singlet state, so it should be entangled. Answer is surprising, maybe, if you have not thought about it in terms of mixed state entanglement. There's a transition at one third between separable and non-separable state. And we can, uh, I'm not going to dwell on this. This is, we can, you can ask me later how, how to think about this. this. This at least tells you it's not something very intuitive. There exists some interesting choice of basis, which allows you to write down this state as in this form when p is less than one third. You have to think about it, how to write it this way, some work, but it can be done. So now I want to use this idea of separability to many body entanglement. That's, that's, that's the purpose. So I will, so this is the first result I will, uh, from this work. Uh, the claim is take, the, take any Tori code in any dimension. You can expand it in eigenbases, right? Eigenbases are, in the eigenbases things look very entangled. So each, each of these eigenstates are, are entangled. In fact, they have topological entanglement entropy even when they're highly excited because they're loops and closed loop constraint and so on. But there exists a rewriting of this, this density matrix as some completely other states which are short range entangled. So these, there's a rewriting of density. It is, this is an identity. And we know exactly what these states are. You have to read our paper to look at what they are. These are not topologically ordered. And they are ground states of some, uh, of some, uh, of some Hamiltonian. And they are area law and so on. So they, they are completely short range entangled states. And you can do this ding opposition if temperature is bigger, bigger than some condition. And if you put that condition, you find in two dimensions, uh, you can do it at any, any temperature in, 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 in thermodynamic limit. L goes to infinity. T, A, and T, B both are 0 in thermodynamic limit. In 3D, minimum of T, A, T, B is again 0 <coughs> and under our construction. But when you go to four dimensions, you find at least the construction we followed, uh, it looks like minimum of T, A, T, B is an order one number. So four dimensional Tori code, at least within this construction, seems to have entanglement left over. But this doesn't prove. It, it only shows we, could, we couldn't find maybe perhaps such a basis for 4 Tori code. Maybe there exists some other. This, this is a, if this happens, if I can do this, then there is no topological order above zero temperature. But if I couldn't do it, maybe I was not uh, smart enough. Maybe there is some other way to write it in some other files. Um, th this, this thing, it just, in, in, in this case, that's, if you go to a derivation, it, it does correspond to transition temperature. I mean, it's because it's, we can solve everything here. Just the partition, where the partition function becomes singular, that's a temperature. So, yeah, that's the thing with this story code, it's kind of easy to argue what happens. So, um, so, so this leads to a question, although I could argue when something is not entangled, it's good to ask, uh, is there a measure which tells me yes or no answer? Something like entanglement, some, some notion of entanglement entropy. So we do that now, so the, uh, it's, it's, it's generally a very hard problem, mixed state entanglement, but there is a necessary condition for something being separable. And that leads to entanglement measure. So let me, so the condition is if you take a density matrix and do what is called partial transpose, it's some operation. If you can't follow this in real time, don't worry. But the next slide, at least I will give you criteria, which is you can just use. So if you do partial transpose, if the partial transpose density, partial transpose uh, this, this state, which is no longer a density matrix necessarily, it, it, it's a Hermitian matrix, but no longer a density matrix, if it happens to have all eigenvalues positive, uh, then the state is you can you, you can show it's it's separable. No, yeah. So it's it's so there exist states which are which are not uh, separable, but for which uh, eigenvalues are still positive. So it's a uh, it's it, so the uh, heuristically speaking, it throws away all the classical stuff, but also throws away, throws away some quantum stuff. This better measure than something which uh, keeps some classical stuff. At least when at least you know you are not keeping some classical stuff. Exactly, exactly. So some of the other, for example, th things like uh, entanglement or purification or mutual information, those things are really bad. They are not measures of entanglement because there exist states which are separable on which they are non-zero. So that's why people don't call them entanglement measures. But this thing, which is called entanglement negativity, which is one norm of this thing, is a good entanglement measure for various reasons. It is entanglement monotone, zero for separable states, and so on. Its, it's physical meaning is also very good. It upper bounds the rate of conversion of 
uh, uh, given some state, you can pull out bell pairs from it. The rate at which you can do it is given by this. So it really knows about bell, uh, bell inequality violation and so on. So it's a very useful thing. So, uh, so let me uh, mention one of the most uh, interesting result in this entanglement negativity. This is, yes. Right, it, exactly. Yeah. So, 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 so for two qubits, entanglement is fully understood for mixed state. All measures of entanglement match on that, including this one. It's, it's, a, it's independent of basis, the way it's defined. Right. The, the one norm is independent of basis. Um, I, I have to speak up, sorry. Um, you, can, you can talk about Bell's inequality of, of general operators. Yeah. So, it's, it's a think of like, um, generally in quantum information, people like Bell's inequality in terms of just qubits. So, the idea is that you can. Uh, in, in terms of just two qubits, so you do some quantum channel on it and map it to some problem of just bell pairs. So it's it's some it's like distilling things out of. So yeah, you can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was the reason people. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the so this is a very interesting result. As you know, there is an area law for 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 one M entropy in the underground state for most systems. I, I mean, there exist exceptions, but more, more or less, most things have area law entanglement, maybe some small low corrections. There is something similar for, for entanglement negativity, which is entanglement measure for mixed states, even at, even at non-zero temperature. So recall, if you, if you, if you had taken a, if you take a one M entropy of a, of, a, of a thermal state, it's volume law. Because, and this volume law is very boring, it's just classical entropy. So you don't like, it's, it's, a, it's just, it doesn't know about any, this volume has no quantum mechanics in it, it's just thermal entropy in trace row log row. Uh, uh, but if you do uh, entanglement negativity, you get an area law to begin with. So you already thrown away the most useless part and that was the leading term. So that's pretty remarkable that it's area law, even for a highly excited uh, state with finite energy density, but it's a mixed state. And the intuition is that when you have a mixed state over A and B, um, you can purify that state by uh, add, adding some extra Hilbert space, so the whole thing is now pure. What's happening is under this purification, A and B have to highly entangle with the bath, and that kills the entanglement between A and B. That just word, it's a poetry, so you can convert that into other things, but let me, just, I don't want to give more, more than that, because I have things to say. So, uh, so what we'll, our strategy is to, um, to use this entanglement negativity as a way to understand whether it's topological order or not at non-zero temperature because it's an entanglement measure. So we write down entanglement negativity as an area law minus some constant part, very much like the way you will do topological entanglement entropy at zero temperature. Recall it's area law minus some topological entanglement entropy. So you can use that thing here again, and, um, and it's very, uh, and whenever this is non-zero, this subleading term, you can, it, you can argue it cannot be obtained by local patching along the boundary. It's suddenly non-local. It's very similar to uh, all those, like this, like S of A bar is, you remember, uh, so the, and for, the, for, the, for the pure state, S of A is S of A bar, which shows that this term has to be topological if it's there. Same argument goes for this. You can show that by partial transpose over A or B, it's the same answer. So all those, uh, this curvature expansion stuff goes through. I mean, this is for comments for just experts, but. Um, so this is the main result. And, uh, and uh, at least I get to say the main result before a time, then I will come over uh, some of the limits of this. So the, so the same temperature which entered in, that, in, in, this separability, in this separability enters here. So what happens is that if you look at, first look at that uh, topological part of the Wannemann entropy, which I mentioned is, doesn't capture entanglement. Uh, it survives, for example, in 3D toric code uh, up till this uh, non-zero temperature, which is lambda b in thermodynamic limit. So always set, if you, if you want to quickly see this, set L to infinity. So this is 0, 0, 0 lambda b, lambda a, lambda b. So what happens in, in, for example, in 2D Tori code, at any non-zero temperature, topological part of, 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 of the negativity becomes zero. This is a minimum of TATB is zero. Minimum of zero, zero, zero. And uh, for 3D, again, minimum of zero lambda B is zero. So it, it drops to zero immediately. But in 4D, it survives up till some non-zero temperature, which is minimum of lambda A, lambda B. OK. Um, so. Um, so let's consider now various limits. So 
consider 2D Tori code. So already in 2D Tori code, there is something interesting. So if you, if you set, for example, one of the things to infinity, let's say lambda b to infinity, before taking thermodynamic limit. So first tell lambda b to infinity, that's then take l to infinity. You see there's a half log 2 survives in the S topo up till infinite temperature. It already tells you such a bad, I mean, because there exists at least, as long as there exists one kind of excitations, electric charges or magnetic charges, you can't do braiding. So this is a, that's why it already shows you this S topo was actually a bad quantity. So S topo looks like this in this limit, but this drops to zero immediately. So it knows about the fact you can't do braiding at any non-zero temperature. Um, so there is no quantum liquid at, at t, t bigger than zero. So, and uh, remarkably, we can calculate this analytically in this, um, you will be, either you can be impressed or you can be horrified by looking at this expression, depends on, I don't know whom you ask, but there is a full analytical expression for topological negativity we can calculate, and uh, the limiting case, you can, uh, you, can, you can take, you can pull out all of this information from here in this single plot. It's basically a function of L times e to the power minus beta, this topological time entropy, and then if now to consider limit, first send, let's say, L to infinity, and keep beta order one. So keep temperature, anything, first take L to infinity. So then you are here, it goes to zero. But if you first take temperature to infinity, I mean, at temperature to zero, so beta to infinity, and then take L to infinity, so then you're, then you're picking up the ground state, then it is log two. So this is, this is what you were asking in the beginning, is there some quantity which is order parameter for topological order at non-zero temperature? The requirement for that must be that at zero temperature, it is log two for tutorial code, at any non-zero temperature, it should be zero. So this is that quantity. Um, now let's go to three detory code. Um, so um, you have uh, this uh, this model, and then let's uh, first uh, again I will consider limits. We have the general expression which I showed you earlier, but limits are very insightful. First set lambda a to order one. Lambda a is the energy for creating a charge, and take lambda b to infinity. So this suppresses loops, but allow charges. As soon as charges are allowed, you should not be able to do braiding, as I earlier argued. So in, in this limit, in fact, the, the topological time entropy expression again remains exactly the same, this expression, recover this expression. Um, so no topological order at finite t, um, which makes sense. So the general rule is that as long as there's some point like excitation, you should not be able to, I mean, you should not have any non-zero topological entanglement at non-zero temperature. And this again agrees with this, this thing, but more interesting limit is this limit. You first set lambda a to infinity, so don't allow point like charges, and then consider lambda b to be order one. In this case, we find non-zero non topological entanglement entropy. So this is interesting because it means if you are, I don't know, if you are experimentalist, imagine like, if, if, I mean, keep lambda very large and uh, keep lambda b order one. In this limit, at least you pro perhaps have more protection than in, in the other limit or, 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 or in when they are both order one. And the physics is this, if you think about this, when you create the mass of the, of the, of the electric charge is very large, they, can, they can't move around very much. They're basically stuck. So this is the picture, maybe I should show this once more. So the, so the loops, the, so the loop moved around very quickly, but the charges are slowly doing. So you can define the braiding very quickly because you are braiding this with this, other things are basically not even moving. So that's a physical picture in this limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, now comes the more, most interesting case, four code, most interesting to me, but maybe not to experimentalists. So um, in this case, they only loop like excitation, there are no point like excitation, and that's pointed, pointed out long ago by these group of people that it supports finite temperature quantum memory. Their arguments were based on some energetics and so on of loops. There wasn't any order parameter in their calculation which knows about entanglement. It was based on energetics of loops, and it, it made sense, and so, um, we expect this, that they exist topological entanglement entropy up till some temperature, which is non-zero, and this is what we find. Uh, so we have to first calculate rainy negativity. Again, it's a technical thing, and they take n going to uh, one and so on, but it, it's basically two log two. We can only do low temperature expansion, so that's, I should point out, we can't calculate it analytically to all temperatures, but we know perturbation theory converges because in, in 3D and 2D doesn't work because one of the temperature goes to zero, as long as the transition temperatures are order one, you can do perturbation theory to any order. And we can see that log two survives. Any order in perturbation theory changes only the coefficient of the area log coefficient. It doesn't change the subleading term. It's very much like asking the question, if you take 2D Tori code, you have the fixed point wave function, 
and then you add some transverse field, uh, what does it do? As, uh, as long as you don't cross the transition, it only changes the area lock coefficient, doesn't change the subleading term. It's a similar argument. It's something because the subleading term is coming from some very non-local thing, and, and perturbation theory is like, is like a cluster expansion. So you never actually, unless the order of expansion becomes system size, you don't change this. So this is a summary, again. So um, this is, uh, so the topological order survives in 4D Tori code up till temperature, which is minimum lambda A, lambda B. In, uh, in other dimension, it doesn't. And so it's very reasonable to call this transition, this transition in 4D Tori code as a quantum phase transition at non-zero temperature, because you lose quantum entanglement at that temperature. So that's, 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 that was my original criteria, and, it, it, and from that point of view, it makes sense. Um, so, um, so, what, so the, coming back full circle to the, to the beginning of the talk, I asked the question, uh, if you take, for example, transfer serializing model on a square lattice, the finite temperature transition is 2D Ising in, in, on a square lattice, um, and typically that's called a classical transition, and we now just saw that uh, there can exist quantum phase transitions at non-zero temperature, so you can't just say you had non-zero temperature, so everything is classical. This is a counterexample. So it's good to ask the question, what about uh, regular transitions, regular meaning symmetry breaking transitions in, 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 in systems? If, 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 this, if this negativity is such a, I'm putting it on pedestal, uh, I, I should better recover the result that uh, there is no singular negativity at non-zero temperature in, in these in this regular systems, like in uh, ON models or, or Heisenberg model and so on. So we did the analytical calculation of negativity for a spherical model, which has mean field exponents, but you can do everything analytically in closed form. And what we find that, the, this is the critical point, the universal part of negativity, which is obtained by some ABC construction, similar to what you do for topological entanglement entropy, is exponentially small in system size. And the, this, this length scale over which it decays remains finite even at the transition. In fact, it's just equal to beta, one over temperature. So this shows that, um, so this is very interesting. This transition, um, at this transition, all correlation functions of local operators decay power law. And here is this quantity which decays exponentially. I don't know any such thing. Because this, is, this decays exponentially precisely because it's sensitive only to quantum correlations. It's remarkable that you can separate quantum and classical things and, and, and get something like this. And uh, so, the, okay, this is a spherical model. It's like a spherical cow. What about more realistic cows? Uh, perhaps realistic cow made of porcelain. So that's like a transversalizing model. It's still not experiments, but at least it's... So for, for this, we, could, we, we teamed up with Yang Zhikao, Kai Shin, and Chia Min who are experts in, in quantum Monte Carlo. So me and my student worked with them. Um, and looked at the Rainy negativity, which is a Rainy version of, 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 of this entire negativity. And we, have, we could calculate that for exactly solvable models. It behaves exactly like negativity. So we had some confidence based on that. And looked at using Monte Carlo, this quantity. And this is the result after subtraction, despite the fact this is, this is a very uh, I mean, this is some large number, order one, I mean, this is, this is some area law, uh, negativity itself is area law, it looks like L to the power D minus one minus some order one number. Uh, this quantity is fairly large, but after the AB subtraction, you, you see that it's basically zero, the subleading term. So it shows that this transition is classical, it doesn't have any long distance quantum correlations. Yeah, it, it becomes order one. So, and that, that's, that we know from our analytical result, because it looks like e to the power minus L over psi q, and psi q becomes infinity at zero temperature, so it becomes order one number. It's similar behavior. I mean, we couldn't, we didn't do that, but that's what we expect. So this is the picture. Take, uh, so this is maybe, um, maybe a very bold conjecture, but I will say it. Take any model which where you don't expect any, anything like Fourier Tory code kind of physics, anything where some non-local operators going through all operator, take pretty much any model that you've ever seen, if you calculate this ABC subtracted negativity, you should find zero in thermodynamic limit at any temperature, at any non-zero temperature, if you first take thermodynamic limit. Um, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, take, take any CFT, for example, in 2 plus 1D. It's, long range entanglement can be of two different at a critical point. It'll be again, again, it'll be the same. Superconductor is not, there's nothing quantum about superconductor at non-zero temperatures. I mean, you can describe it by some effective 
In fact, if we zero, we will be area law, but the area law will be there, and the coefficient and the coefficient of the. In fact, I should say coefficient of area law can be singular across the transition. That's a short distance physics, but a subleading term which is long distance entanglement is zero. So, so that's about it. So the uh, I will just take thirty more seconds. So the non-local part of negativity is an order parameter for finite and transition. It even knows about braiding and statistics of anyons, and then it leads to precise distinction between quantum and classical transitions. And it allows one to define quantum phase transition at non-zero temperature, which is very unusual. So, because we don't think, we think of quantum phase transition only at zero temperature. So, I, I won't get the outline of the calculation. It's some, uh, I don't know, it's a long calculation, but you can look, look at the paper for details. So, this is, these are a few future directions. For example, are there models where singularity occurs only in quantum, not in classical, anything? That will be amazing at finite temperature. Because in 4D toric code, there is a singularity in partition function. I'm saying singularity only occurs when you take partial transpose, but not in the original one. I will call them purely quantum transition at non zero temperature. What about industrial applications of negativity? Let me just, this is, a, this is more like a joke, but I mean, this, this, this sentence, but not the actual thing. Um, you can optimize parameters in some noisy quantum computer to, to maximize negativity. That should be the right thing to do if you have actual experiment. Not think about some pre physics or, I mean, some qubit. Really interacting. So, um, and I will. I won't get into this. It's some longer discussion. And let me just leave it there. Questions? Uh, so, for this 4D Toric code example, right. when you look at this entanglement negativity. So near the transition, is there some interesting? We, we don't know. So that I should say, near the transition, we don't know the behavior. We know the low temperature expansion. Oh, I see. And we know, sir, we know with and analytically, we know at any non at any temperature above transition, it's minimum T A T B, it's zero. That we can show, and we can show at low temperature, it is log two. So it's and based on the uh, per, per, uh, convergence of perturbation theory, it's very reasonable to expect, like in other systems, that it will survive. But we don't know the critical mm -hmm. behavior. But we have some intuition based on these pictures of strings becoming larger, what the exponent should be. Um, that's a conjecture. And it, but it can be done numerically without sign problem. No one has done that. So just the 3D Toric code, but not right. suppressing the charges. So, uh, uh, sorry? Suppress the charges. So the right. gauge theory in three dimensions. Uh, so there's this transition at finite temperature. Right. Which is also where you lose the the topological part of the right negativity entanglement negativity right. Um, so uh, can I think of so in a purely classical three D gauge theory that's not going to happen. Uh, presumably, you don't have this entanglement. And in, 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 if it's a purely a classical gauge theory, then I, I'm setting lambda to zero rather than infinity, right? I'm saying uh, that the charge charge term in a purely classical theory is. Zero. It's set to zero rather than infinity. Yeah, yeah. So that's why if you set lambda to zero, then it is zero. But if you set lambda to infinity, it's locked. Uh -huh. You want lambda equal to infinity, and you want to suppress the charges. Right? That's what lambda to infinity is the suppression of charges. I could think of a classical uh, gauge theory without any electric charges, right? With a uh, um, cross law constraint. Suppose. I don't know what does that mean. Uh, maybe it means lambda is zero. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. It sounds like there's something you can do in 3D itself without going no, no, in three, That's where we are first going to do numerics. Yeah, okay. Um, because 4D is, I mean, three, the whole point of 3D calculation is to mimic 4D. So this uh, charge suppress 3D uh, theory, it's dual to the 3D icing model? Um, 3D quantum icing? I think uh, lambda to infinity is not that simple. It, if you think about it, and even in Monte Carlo, it didn't seem as, there's some extra constraint. Okay. So. So, um, yes, uh, but uh, I'm saying that uh, in, in those systems which are non-topological, there is always finite lifetime of qubit at non-zero temperature. Auditory code is interesting when you think of topological quantum computing, even with the presence of heat bar, the lifetime of qubit is infinite. Right? That's the surprising part. You have a system which is quantum at non-zero temperature without decoherence, even after coupling to heat bath. That's why it's such a special, interesting thing. It's non-zero negativity. So, so Tarun, so this um, negativity <coughs> gives a very, uh, very, uh, I mean, rigorous definition of what is quantum, what is not quantum. I mean, from your definition. Right. So, uh, but then, 
But how about the, like in the real life, like for them in the real material, like quantum huh? significant material, like the, the alpha rosinate we're talking about. Right. I mean, people will say at final temperature, we see the signature of uh, this is some cross fractionalized right? If you take, for example, citations. forget yeah. about alpha rosinate, like let's say quantum hall, right? Uh, the reason the quantization exists is because the, there's an exponential deviation at finite temperature. There's a gap. Gap is much larger than temperature. That's why you have to cool things down. So that's always there. I mean, it, uh, yeah, but that state, according to your definition, is not quantum entangled. Sure, it's not. In, in, ah, the, in, the, in, the, in the asymptotic limit. But people don't care about asymptotics because, I don't know, okay. just yeah. reality. So, so, One last question. Uh, 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 yeah. Sorry, uh, so if you localize these fine charges, uh, Lo localize I mean, let's say if you put some disorder and these are localized, so then, uh, but will the mixed state be able to distinguish that case? Because you told, gave a dynamical argument, right? No, no, I, I, I'm not, you have to ask more precise questions. What do you mean by, uh, you're considering a mixed state, you're considering Hamiltonian, which is disordered, and, and considering a mixed state of that? Yes, yeah. So then there's no, lo I mean, there's no, nothing like MBL in the presence of heat bath to begin with. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but you gave so that's a, so you gave an argument where you said that if these point charges are uh, not dynamical, right? So then somehow uh, <coughs> right. you, you can recover some of this at least at low temple, right? Yeah. Right, right, and, and huh. yeah. So if you if you, if you add disorders, hmm. something like that, and hmm. really is some maybe lifetime over which they don't move, then maybe it will help. Okay. Uh, sure, hmm. but asymptotically probably it will again leak out. Yeah. Okay. Um. There are no other questions. Let's thank. Us. Maybe I have one more comment on that. Just the, for example, take something like fracton phases, right? So we can we have some result on that also. I mean, because some of the results are just generated for CSS code. Fracton is one example. Again, at low temperature you will see something, but it's just some crossover. Again, because of glassy physics, you will start seeing some negativity, but we haven't calculated. But we know, I mean, kind of what will happen. So.